Hello everyone, welcome to Foliage for Unreal Engine with Speedtree Tutorial Part 3. To begin, choose File and Export to Unreal Engine or Export to Game depending on which version of Speedtree you're using. Choose a file name and click Save. Here, you can choose settings for LODs, Variations, Scene Blends, Atlases, Geometry Modifications, and Textures. Let's start with LOD. The first level, highest only, will export only the highest quality LOD that we've made. The next option, all LODs, will export every LOD that we've created. The next option, LODs plus billboard, will export all the LODs we've created and a billboard object. The billboard object is a very simple mesh that gives the illusion of detailed geometry without the overhead and is used for objects at a distance. Lastly, we have the option to export the billboard only. In this first example, I'm going to leave atlases at none. Under textures, you can choose the resolution you desire. I'm going to leave the max size at original. Click OK to start the export process. This creates a .st file, which we will import into Unreal, as well as a texture for our branch color, which is just a solid color, a normal map, which also has the roughness plugged into the alpha channel, and a leaf color map, which has the opacity plugged into the alpha channel as well. I'm going to export one more example, and the only difference is that I'm going to set Atlas to everything instead of none. This time around, it only exported three files, a .st file, a single base color map, and a single normal map. Not only are these files smaller in file size, but they're also more efficient to use in Unreal Engine materials. To import these into Unreal, drag and drop the ST file into the content browser. If you're planning on scattering these with the foliage tools, choose painted foliage. Otherwise, choose individual actors. Check the box for create materials, as well as the boxes that appear below. Include vertex processing will ensure that the wind we've created will work. When you're ready, click import. This process automatically creates our mesh, our materials, and imports our texture maps as well. Let's dive into the leaf material. What you see is the basic speed tree material setup, which took our texture maps and applied them automatically to the base color, roughness, the opacity mask, and normal map. It also added a speed tree node that's plugged into the world position offset. This node controls settings for geometry type, the wind type, and the LOD type. The geometry type and the wind type should correlate exactly with what the settings were in speed tree. The LOD type controls the transitions between LODs. You have two options. The smooth option creates a gradual transition 
just like we saw inside of speed tree and the pop option creates a hard transition between each LOD level. Now I'm going to import the second example which contain an atlas. As before, it created the mesh, materials, and imported the textures automatically. If we dive into the material, you'll notice the setup is also identical. The only difference is that the branch and the leaves are sharing one texture map. Let's import these into the scene by dragging and dropping the static meshes into the viewport. You'll notice as we move closer to and further from the foliage, they transition between the LOD levels that we've created. I'd like to point out two things. Number one, there's no wind affecting our plants. And number two, there's no subsurface scattering coming through the leaves. So let's set both of those things up. First, create a wind directional source and drag it into the viewport. It still doesn't appear that wind is affecting our plants. So if we dive into the details, we have options for strength, speed, min and max gust amount, radius, and point wind. And if we zoom in really closely to our foliage, we can see it actually is moving just very subtly due to the low setting. To make the wind more pronounced, we can increase the strength and the speed of the wind directional source. Now we're getting some very dynamic movement, but you'll notice that it feels a bit rigid and we're not getting the individual movement in the leaves that we created in speed tree. Also, the speed of the wind is pretty fast, so we'll adjust that in a second. To fix the leaf motion, let's dive into the leaf material. Navigate to the speed tree node and set the wind type to best. Now we have individual motion on each leaf. If I switch over to unlit, the difference between best wind on the left and better wind on the right is much more obvious. Let's make some quick adjustments to the strength and the speed to slow this wind down just a bit. It usually takes a few seconds for the wind speed to adapt to these changes. Okay, let's refine the materials a bit. We'll start by diving back into the leaf material. First, let's add some color variation to the leaves. To do that, we'll drop down a speed tree color variation node. 
then create a parameter and name it variation and plug that into the amount. Next, plug the base color into the base color input and plug the result into the base color input for the material. As we adjust the variation amount, you'll notice the different instances take on different hues. This parameter is incredibly sensitive, so you typically want to work with very small values. Next, let's change the shading model to two-sided foliage. This exposes a few more inputs that we need to connect to create the subsurface scattering effect in our leaves. Specifically, opacity and subsurface color. Next, we'll create a multiply node and a parameter and name that SSS and then we'll plug the base color and the SSS into that multiply node and then attach that to the subsurface color. Lastly, we'll create another parameter and call that opacity and plug that into the opacity input. If we start adjusting the SSS value, you'll notice right away that we're suddenly getting some light passing through our leaves. However, it's completely uniform and there are no shadows. This is where the opacity value comes into play. It accepts values from 0 to 1, with 0 being completely translucent like you see now. And as you increase that value toward 1, it starts to introduce some shading between the leaf layers. Okay, let's export a billboard and import that into Unreal Engine. Let's drag that into the viewport. You'll notice right away, it looks a little bit different than the foliage we've imported into the scene already. And up close, it doesn't really hold up very well, but that's also not its purpose. These billboards are great for distant objects. If I switch over to lighting only, you can see that this is made up of just a few polygons compared to the complex objects we've already imported into the scene. This odd shape allows it to transition between a few rigid views that hold up pretty well at a distance. If you export all LODs plus billboard, it will transition to this object automatically. If you found this tutorial helpful, consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.